Hello my little seedlings, my name is Toffee and welcome to my channel. Hello, hello everybody and happy Monday. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Today I am back doing some more forest core decorating on Oakwood and I am so excited to show you guys this build because this was this was a big build. This is uh, quite the big build so grab a hot drink, a snack and cozy up because this might be a little bit longer than my usual build. <laughs> So if you do enjoy this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below, all that good stuff. But without further ado, let's get into today's speed build. So this is where we're going to be building today, and you might be thinking, Toffee, where the heck is this? <laughs> Well, this is just up the ramp from the resident services, and I kind of already started out beforehand with this base because I knew that building this empty square was going to take me forever and we have an empty square here today because we're going to be creating some sunken water areas. I have missed doing sunken water areas so much. I'm very excited to be doing them again. It was a big build. It was- it took a long time. It was a, a quite a big build on this island but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and even though this takes up like <laughs> a quarter of the map it was worth it just for one villager house so whoever whoever I move in here has to be top tier villager to be honest to deserve this space on my island but yes I started out with kind of like a cutout area for where I wanted the sunken area to be I didn't want it to be any bigger than this area it still ended up pretty big though to be honest and then I'm just going to start carving out the um kind of like outer ring I guess of where the water is going to be and I'm also going to be creating a land bridge in the middle. I originally thought about just doing like a little small log bridge across which is why it's only one wide at the moment but I do go in later on and I do decide to end up doing one of those fancy curved like land bridges that I see all the time. And I decided to go for one of those instead, but you'll see me doing that later on. But for now, I'm just going to be doing the exterior of the edges just to get the area right for the actual water. So before I actually do any waterscaping, I want to kind of map out where the waterfalls are going to actually fall, just to make sure that they are in the right position before I go ahead and start doing any other waterscaping, any other terraforming. But now I'm going to move on to doing the kind of surrounding cliffs that are going to enclose this area. Whenever I do a sunken water area, I feel like it is necessary to build up cliffs and area around it because I want it to be more enclosed, I want to add waterfalls on top of waterfalls to make it a little bit more dramatic. So this right side is going to be the most enclosed side. Uh, this is also going to be where I expand on the terraforming just in a little bit I think because this is where I'm going to be putting the little villager house and this is going to be like a cabin next to the sunken falls and I thought it looked so cute. I also really wanted to put one down in the actual water but I just didn't have space in this build and the build would have had to have been absolutely ginormous for me to accommodate an extra building so um, I did not do that unfortunately. I might do later on, I definitely want to expand on this area, I have some vague ideas for what I want to do with kind of the left side of the sunken falls later on. I kind of want to do like a little viewpoint with a bridge on the maybe on the third tier or second tier, third tier, I can't remember which it is now but I think that would be pretty, that would be pretty cute. Thank you. 
And now I am going in and I'm just kind of correcting the center part of this land bridge to actually make it one of those curved ones, one of the fancy curved ones. Uh, this was actually quite difficult to get right because I wanted it to be wide enough that it was going to be easy to decorate, but I obviously had to accommodate by kind of moving some of the terraforming around. There was a lot of terraforming correcting to do, which is why I started out with kind of like a empty square base. I felt like that was the easiest way to do it. And now I'm going back into that upper right hand cliff to kind of map out the area for where I want the villager house to be. So it is going to be all tucked away in here. When I do forest court islands, I quite like to tuck my villager houses into the cliffs. I don't know why, I just feel like there's a lot more room to decorate around the area in that case and you can also add more trees than usual. Well, that's what I think, it's probably not the case, but that's how I feel it is anyway. <laughs> Then I'm going to go back and do some more terraforming on the left hand side. I want to obviously enclose this side as well. This is the side where I'm thinking about maybe adding a diagonal bridge that you can see from the land bridge. So it's kind of like bridgeception. <laughs> but I have to obviously expand on this top level a terraforming that I'm terraforming now a lot more to accommodate for the space that it needs to fit a diagonal bridge. I always feel like trying to slip in diagonal bridges is incredibly difficult in comparison and then I'm also going to be adding a little uh, cliffscaping in over by the cabin which you can see I have now placed in and I have now decorated the outside currently you'll be horrified to know that it is Boone that lives there <laughs> but I'm gonna be moving in probably an absolute top tier villager I'm not sure who yet if you have any recommendations let me know in the comments down below I'd be interesting to see you know who who you guys suggest but suggest me a villager can't promise that it's going to be that one but <laughs> and then i'm going back over the, to the top left once again because i wanted to enclose it even more this was when i had the idea in my head that i was going to eventually expand on this top left piece and this is eventually where i want to have the diagonal bridge on that very top layer so there's probably gonna be a lot of decoration and trees to take down but that's fine I will just I will go with the flow it might not work but you know you might see that in a future video or not it really depends on how this island progresses and now that all of the kind of surrounding cliff area and all of the surrounding terraforming is pretty much done I'm going to go in with the water tool and I'm going to start actually digging out the sunken falls part of the falls. I'm trying to leave a couple of gaps here and there. Nothing too dramatic, I guess, but I really wanted a place to be able to place uh, like bushes or flowers on the edge just to spice up the edges a little bit more because I feel like a lot of sunken falls, especially on the, this very lower level with all of the water, can look really kind of flat and not the overgrownness that I'm really wanting it to give. Unfortunately, we can't hang vines and then cut out the corner pieces, which is really frustrating. I really wish that I could. Unfortunately, that is not the case, so I was not able to do that. It would have looked a lot nicer in the end, I think, with a little bit more overgrownness, but I'll take what I can get. And then obviously I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the right hand side.
And then once the water is finally all put down, I'm going to start connecting all of the falls together, the top tier falls, the middle tier falls. I did play around with this one a little bit. I decided it was there was a little bit too much straightness going on. I didn't like all the straight edges. So I try to make my waterfalls kind of a little bit directional, you know, in the absolute tiny space I have left. Um, I do adjust a little bit of waterfalls later on. I think I did it off camera though, so unfortunately I can't show it, but it was around this side. Um, I added in an extra waterfall and then I also connected up that really small one, the one, the one wide, the one tile wide one to the two tier, two tier, two, two tile wide. <laughs> Oh gosh. And then I'm going to connect this little waterfall as well. I wanted to make sure everything kind of connected together a little bit better. Apart from the very top cliffs, you know, I just want more space for trees. Speaking of trees, this is where we then go ahead and start planting the trees. This is such a satisfying part of the process because I always, always question my terraforming. Is the space too open? Is it too enclosed? Until I put down the trees. I do wish I had a little bit more space for more trees. I added in so many trees, but it didn't feel like it was enough trees for me. Personally, if I can squeeze more in at a later date, I'm gonna try my absolute darnest to. <laughs> but I just, I want the area to be really full. I, I, I don't want you to hardly be able to see any sky at all when you look up. I just want it to be trees. And you guys probably know the drill by now, now that the trees are all placed down, I'm going to start planting my bushes, all of the bushes. I used a ridiculous amount of bushes, as I do in pretty much all of my forest core builds at this point. This is basically bush island. It's no longer oak wood, it's bush wood. <laughs> With all of the bushes placed down, I'm then going to go ahead and start mapping out the area for the path so that we can kind of get a feel on the actual area that we do have left to decorate and plant flowers and whatnot. And this was um, an interesting path to place down. You guys know that I don't like doing paths at the best of times. <laughs> I hate placing down paths. I feel like it's so stressful. <laughs> Not stressful, that's not the right word, but I'm sure you know what I mean. And I just wanted to be able to leave enough space to decorate on these cliffs and be able to make it overgrown without, you know, messing, like not having enough path. You know, animal crossing problems, I guess. <laughs> And now we can start the actual decorational process. Yay, all of the terraforming, waterscaping, tree scaping is done. I'm going to start as I always do with my weeds just to make it, oh, not weeds, it's wheat fields, isn't it? It's wheat fields, Toffee. With my wheat fields to make it look that little extra overgrown and lush as always. I'm using a combination of both of the colors. I feel like I've been really into doing that lately because I'm, I'm a monochrome girl. And I'm trying not to be, you know, completely one tone of colour for everything. <laughs> I'm trying to use multiple different colours of green rather than just one. And 
then I'm also going to start adding in some mush logs. Mush logs are basically just a staple on this island to be honest and from here on out the decoration doesn't really have any sort of order. You know me, I can be orderly or disorderly. I'm not sure if those are the correct words to be using but I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that they were. <laughs> But yeah, mostly just flowers and pumpkins, all of the overgrown stuff. It was a little bit difficult to make some of the areas as kind of cluttered as I want them to. This is definitely not a playable island. Um, it's a pain to get around, but I'm only here for the aesthetics. I'm only here to make a pretty island and I don't really care about gameplay, so <laughs> I'm also going to be adding in my obligatory purple hyacinths, you know me, and also some log fencing just to fill up the area and also give it a little bit more visual interest as well. I'm also going to kind of start inching my way across to the lower right hand corner of this build. Nothing too, you know, detailed because I don't actually know where this area is going to lead currently. I don't know what it's going to lead onto or into. So it's kind of just going to be very simple for the moment because the decorations are probably going to change just because we don't know what we're going to do with the next area yet. Also going to of course throw down some leaf piles just to add a little bit more overgrown feels to it. I feel like they are really good for when you have kind of more empty spaces and you don't really know what to put down. I'm lightly decorating at this villager house. I just used a tiny library and a bike and a leaf pile and I loved it. <laughs> it wasn't a very big area to decorate. And then I'm also just doing some light decorations here and there. Nothing too extravagant to be honest. But you know me and my forest court islands. I don't really like to do extravagant extravagant decorating on them. I'm also going to plop down my little pine cones and mushrooms and then hang my vines on the cliff to give the cliffs a little bit more visual interest and this build is pretty much gonna be all finished. So that is my Sunken Falls villager house area all completed. It was a big build, it took me ridiculous amounts of hours but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Apart from the lack of trees in the background, it might just be the camera angle but it's really bugging me. <laughs> it might just be because of the camera angle but I wish I could fit more trees in but other than that I am very happy with how it turned out. It's been a while since I've done a sunken area so it was, uh, it, you know, it was, it was uh, interesting to try and get back into that kind of terraforming, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you liked the build. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of this build and as always, I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye!